Bow. What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and I'm back with episode six of Ask Brand Man, where I answer your questions from the comment section below. And if you like this series, make sure you go ahead and smash that subscribe button and smack that like button so I know that it's worth doing and we can keep this thing rolling. Now, let's go ahead and hop into question number one. It's the network. All right, we got Caesar's Wish asking, I have songs I wish I could post because I think that they have their own unique qualities, but I made them a minute before I had the actual sound quality, mixing, mic quality, etc. of my music got better. I like them, but I wouldn't be comfortable posting them on Apple Music, Spotify, etc. I wish I could do a soft drop or something, and in the old days, that would simply be a SoundCloud drop, but I don't feel like SoundCloud is enough anymore. Do you have any ideas? Well, I mean... Man, you said I don't want to really do it on SoundCloud. Then you also said you don't want to do it on Apple, Spotify, etc. I mean, what do you, I mean, put it on a CD and hand it out? I don't know, man. Um, But no, honestly, to be real, there's a couple of options. Number one, you could not overthink this whole Apple, Spotify thing. You know, I understand there's a whole, an official perception of that. You could drop it and honestly, people overthink that. People probably aren't paying that much attention. If they, they check it out, they like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. That's one route, and also you can put it on your YouTube audio page, right? Not your YouTube audio page, but as an audio on your YouTube page, that is something else that you can do, and then just say and think nothing of that. Maybe if you see enough feedback, you do something more with it. That's a couple of options that you can do where you don't have to overthink and really do much promotion of it at all. Of course, you can post on your web page, like social media, all that stuff organically, and see what happens, but that's about it, all right? Now, option number two. This is where we get a lot more creative with it and thoughtful, right? Because what you have to realize is no matter what you do, it's all about context. And this is when branding comes into play. So let's say you have a considerable fan base that really rocks with you and they're used to a specific sound, right? Let's say there's that. So there's even more pressure and you know for a fact that 1,000 people are going to listen at least whenever you just drop this song, no promotion or not. Number one. I'm still pro, put it on Apple, Spotify, all that stuff. Like, put it on there. Like, it's, don't, don't you know, stress that part out. But when you do it, it's about context. So how do you let people know that this is some old stuff and I'm releasing it now, right? Because that's going to take pressure off you and it's going to create some, some managing of expectations, right? So you can name it my first songs, right? Or old stuff. There's there's things that are contextual to your brain that'll make it make more sense, however you name it. But you can create a story around it where you let people know, yo, this is some music when I was just discovering myself. Or, or this is, I wanted to give you all a sense of who I used to be, right? Before I found my sound to show a little encouragement, right? You can be, bring a whole narrative of hard work and, and improvement. All that stuff can work, right? You can name it, um, I don't know, let me see. Uh, you, can, you can name it like, um, hmm, you, you know, old days or something like that. There, there's so many creative names you can come up with. I, I, I definitely suggest if you can name it a small piece of project, right, and then create that story around the project, it'll, it'll do wonders. And it makes things so much simpler. You could just push the story, but a lot of people will miss the story. It makes it even stronger when you put it in a small package of a project, whether there's three or five songs that's some kind of EP. And if you put some kind of name that alludes to it, right? Um, you know, uh, what's a, what's a, like old me, I don't know. It's, it's obvious, but you can come up with something far more uh, creative and whatever makes sense for your brand. But just think about the the point of what I'm saying, the narrative, right? Think about the the concept that you can create around it, the narrative that you can create around it that makes it clear that this isn't who I am anymore, sonically, right? But you also have this context to let people know why you dropped it now, right? And maybe you have to lie a little bit. Maybe you just really just want to drop it because you feel like you want to drop it and, and you didn't want to um, have any songs wasted in the chamber, right? Maybe that's it, but you can create a whole story outside of that and just make it, you know, connect, connect dots. You're an artist. You're a storyteller. Do that, all right? Then there's also the legit straight up story of, hey, I had some old songs and I wanted to release them, show the world it is what it is. 
you, you can take whatever approach you want to, but understand that, look, one, review the options. One, drop it. No one ever knows about it because you never really promoted it. Or there's a very likely chance. Two, you can post it as an audio on YouTube so people can hear it. And if you see enough feedback, you know, maybe maybe you do something a little bit more with it. And you can also promote that YouTube clip um, on on um, social media. Right. That's the second option. Then third is creating a narrative around it. Right. Some kind of context around it that lets people know why it's dropping now or just takes the pressure off. So you don't even have to say, this is why I'm dropping now, but you can just let them know clearly this is not who you are by whatever you name it and a small piece of story um, that, that you attach, right? That's simple. I hope that's clear. If we ever need to go into any more details, we'll do that in another episode, all right? Now, let's check out Leo T's question. Leo T said, digitally, my music is performing well, Converting on ads, being picked up by Spotify's algorithm, gaining relevant followers, etc. But I would like to gain a stronger hold locally, not just online. Any suggestions on building a local buzz? Also, would you recommend doing an ad campaign just targeting my city, even though it's on the smaller side? Total population of a million. Thanks in advance for the response, boss. All right, great. First of all, Leo T, congratulations on the fact that your ads are converting well, right? Because um, a lot of people don't even get to that point, but there is more work to do. All right, so you would like to gain a stronger hold locally in general. I'm imagining that you're, you know, you might even be doing completely international in terms of where you're converting with your ads right now. Yes, I suggest running ads targeting your city. Why not? You're running them like now if they're performing horribly then it is what it is, but you can at least do a, you know, five to $20 test to start to see how people are responding in your area. It doesn't matter that it's a smaller, um, a smaller radius. What matters is you're getting the attention that you need. The only thing to do is, is manage your expectations because your ads might be more expensive when they're local, but remember that you're covering more ground, right? Let's, let's, let's bring this board out real quick. So if you're marketing around the world, you can have, you can barely see this. You can have all these dots, right? Five dots in the space. And then you have a smaller space, right? And you might have five more dots and you have an even smaller space, five more dots. Now, what's the point of this? This might be more expensive than marketing here, but this also doesn't come with the benefits of marketing here where now that all these people know about it and they have more chances of overlapping and touching each other, getting to know each other. And now there's like, oh snap, you like this song too? Now they're playing the song at the party together because they like this song and it's starting to spread more organically versus all of this spread right here. These people might be in five different countries. You get what I'm saying, right? And multiply that five by 5,000 and the effect still, still stands because there's less people I mean, there's more people, but they're spread around in more places where you can get these people for less money. I mean, more money, right? But they're more concentrated. Or maybe you get half of the people, but it's still more concentrated and you get more of the organic effect. So that's what you have to do when it comes to um, targeting more specific things and spaces. You have to have that expectation expectation that it's a good chance it'll be more expensive, but understand what the trade-off is. That's the difference between strategy and people who just pay attention to cost per click. I really wish that artists understood that this game is far more than getting the cheapest ad that you can get. Way, way more than that. But that's a whole nother conversation for another day. And let's see, what do we do next? Um, other than that as well, there are some offline strategies you can you can do, right? There's you might have a local radio station. I don't know if you have a cl if a, a club type music, but you can hit up some DJs and pay some DJs. There's multiple things that you can do. There's also local influencers, right? People who aren't as big online, but they are, um, but they have a legitimate real world influence. If people were influencers before social media put numbers to it, right? There's that girl in school that makes every other girl kind of like pay attention, right? And they're kind of copying her style and things or, or she she gets the word out. Same for guys, right? And it's beyond school, this real life. There's a guy that connects everybody, puts everybody on to anything. So if you know any of those people, that helps, right? If you have any schools around, there's e it's easy to find those types of things. So now you're targeting with ads off, 
off, off, I mean, online, and then you're hitting some real world influences online, offline, if possible. And then, of course, you can use those real world influencers that you meet directly in the real world or find a few of them in social media and have them post digitally as well and cover up that area. So if we're targeting and then I have about four or five local DJs or or four or five local uh, popular people in, in college or or something like that. Right. Or just people who might not even be in college or the music industry or anything like that. But they're just people around town who have a decent following of other people around town that all happening at once that'll start to create a decent little little buzz in the city right and especially if you're doing that consistently all right so remember it's a beautiful thing actually when you have people in specific cities they might not have a big follower so they're not re used to these influencer budgets and everything right they aren't used to that however i mean so that means they'll be cheaper however they still have an incredible influence with a certain set of people and is more guaranteed that the people are from where they're from or that concentrated location because they haven't gotten to the point of their influence where there's people from all over the world that know about them. So they might only have 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 followers. Something to consider and to think about. Now, before I get to question number three, I wanna do a, um, just put out the word that, yo, brandmannetwork.com, there's so much going on with brandmannetwork.com right now and so many artists. If y'all have questions, y'all think we can get into detail in answers here? Outside of, of lows, of course, is about anything pretty much that, that are coming that you wanna know. We can answer your questions in the community far more in far more detail, far more real time, and you can hop on calls with us where we can talk and really get into the details, screen share, see what's going on with your ads, see what's going on with your with your music. Check that out. It's worth it. Check it out. But I'll let you decide that for yourself. Um, hop over to the network, and you know, in my opinion, it's dirt cheap. All right, brandmannetwork.com. Check that out. Now let's get to L U C. A, the last question we'll answer for today. What up, brand man? I started making music recently, but as a sample-based producer, I can't upload all of my music on Spotify. Do you think I should only put some of my music on Spotify and some on SoundCloud slash YouTube or keep it all in one place for now? Thanks, brother, and keep up the fire content. All right, so there's... This questions. This is why I mentioned brandmannetwork.com actually, right? Where we can get into the details. I don't know enough to really answer this question like I want to, so I'm going to make a couple of um, assumptions, L-U-C-A, right? There's two scenarios. You said you're a sample-based producer, right? So there's the production answer just as a producer, or are you also saying you produce, but you produce music for yourself as an artist as well? So then there's a, a artist answer we're more so answering. I'm going to start with the producer answer. Um, as a producer, tell me what your goal is, right? That's what I would ask you, all right? Um, but let's say if you're a producer and your goal is to build your own following where people are listening to your instrumentals as a thing, like they do with a, a lot of lo-fi producers or a lot of e EDM producers, and you're trying to build some kind of brand, Spotify, Apple Music, that can have some relevance, right? However... If you're not trying to do that and it's more of a placement game or more just trying to get out to other, yeah, or even just selling and leasing beats, then I would use SoundCloud, YouTube, uh, BeatStars, create some kind of funnel. I would go that route. I wouldn't care about Spotify or Apple Music. Only if I'm trying to build my face brand where people are consuming my beats directly versus music in general. I wouldn't care about Spotify um, if I'm just trying to get placements. Now, if you're trying to get on Spotify, then yeah, push the songs on Spotify and Apple Music that are not samples. And then the other stuff just exists in the, in the on SoundCloud. And I would still try to push the ones I can make music off of over on Spotify. Hopefully, um, the ones that are on SoundCloud, if there are some, if there's some heat over there, then try to get attention with that. And then hopefully get to a point of leverage at some point where I can pay for the sample and, and get it on to SoundCloud, I mean, on Spotify, all that stuff. That's scenario number one. If you're a producer, that's where I'm coming from. If you're an artist, then, hmm, if you're an artist, one, still definitely post your music on Spotify and Apple Music if you feel like it's ready to be posted. Like anything, 
because you're saying you have some songs that are samples and some songs that aren't samples and actually could go. If you have some songs that could be on Spotify, Apple Music, and you feel like you're ready as an artist because you, you you did say you just started and you're developed enough and you feel like some you want to start that process, put that on Apple Music and Spotify, man. Don't worry about these other tracks in that regard, right? You can have all your music on SoundCloud or Audio Mac or something like that, and then you have the music that can go on the DSPs on the DSPs, right? Do that now. Well, actually, you wouldn't be able to do it on Audio Mac, I don't think, because it will, you, you would have to check with um, on, on the Audio Mac scenario. However, the reasoning behind that is one, you don't want to 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 to, to limit your attention that you can get just because you have other music that doesn't fit the criteria, right? So, yes, you have two platforms, two platforms is not that bad. I can tell you that it's better to focus on, you know, one type of platform, which is the Apple Music and Spotify DSPs. And I would try to push that music because I'll be able to get the revenue from that music. And I wouldn't worry too much about the sample music because samples, I mean, man, they've, they've ruined a lot of situations having those samples. All right. But if you feel like you have some music that sampled that really is some heat, yet again, this is now just as an artist, not a producer, I wouldn't, I would post it on YouTube. Hopefully it doesn't have the content copy, copyright issue, and but I would still definitely post it um, on social media and still try to promote it. If right, that song is so much so much heat that it will act as my marketing. So let's look at it this way: There's some people that blow up, blow up off of a song, and then that song is a sample, and then they lose like ninety percent of of the money associated with that song or 97% of the money associated with that song. For an artist who, for all intents and purposes, is unknown, right? You're in obscurity right now. I call that marketing. It's still worth that leverage to blow up, right? Because every song isn't created equal. Every song isn't a song that can blow you up. If you have a song that can blow you up and it has a sample and you're pretty daggone sure about that, I need to do a full video on this, but let that thing blow you up, man. Let that song blow you up. Now you you associate that with a marketing cost that you essentially got for maybe even free because the song's going to pay you back enough where maybe you're not super rich, but it covers at least the cost of the song and now makes people want to listen to you. So you bring them over here and convert them with the other songs that, again, might not do as much as that first song, but you've broken out of obscurity, right? That's better than pushing some songs that can't ever go and you've never really got known. Right. So that's something to think about. It's strategic. Right. People say don't get signed, but you might have a strategy where it makes sense for you. People say do get signed. Right. And well, what's the strategy that works for you? And or, or don't be indie. Well, what's the strategy that works for you? There might be a reason that you're doing it beyond just the indie itself. It's the same when it comes to samples and all this stuff. That's why it's so, so, so important. I swear to you that. um to think beyond, hey, how cheap is this ad, right? What's the ROI of that ad? Or or is this song sampled or not? There's so many strategies and ways to flip the game. There isn't just one answer, right? So, so hopefully I helped you have some things to think about since we're not talking directly. But other than that, man, that's it. And that's this episode of Ag's Brand, man. Hopefully you guys got some more questions. I'm looking forward to answering that. I haven't been seeing enough questions. I know y'all have to have some more questions. Put them in the comment section below. And that's yet again another uh, episode of Ag's Brand, man. And as I mentioned earlier, check out brandmandetwork.com so you can be a part of a, a deeper community where you can get more answers faster and in more context to whatever you have going on personally. All right. If you like this video, go ahead and the like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.